We are just over 48 hours from Michigan and Georgia kicking off in the Orange Bowl down in Miami. And we've got a Wednesday afternoon Daxton Hill update, the story that's taken over the college football world and certainly the Michigan and Georgia world. Daxton Hill, Michigan's five-star recruit, starting junior safety. Will he play on Friday? We're going to tell you what we know coming up here right now. Before we get into that, though, I've got to ask a little bit of a self-promotional ask for you guys. If it's your first time watching the channel if you watch this video if you like what you see go ahead and subscribe we are the largest michigan football community biggest channel for followers and by far the most watched michigan football show on youtube so go ahead and subscribe if you've subscribed in the past though hey now is the time year ending send this link at the bottom of the screen youtube.com slash michigan tv send it to a friend and say hey subscribe to this guy michigan football report great show if that's what you think of course uh and uh, let's help grow it maybe maybe get to nineteen thousand before friday i don't know it's two days away we will see if we can get there all right, we're talking Daxon Hill and what we know about uh, his COVID scare coming up right now. It is Wednesday afternoon. Michigan's offensive players, offensive coaches, etc., had a virtual press conference this morning, and uh, they're asked certainly about Daxon Hill, and we have kind of dug into our sources. People were really, really tight-lipped about this yesterday on Tuesday when this news is first breaking. All we can get for sure at that time was that Hill didn't make the trip. Now we've got a little more information and think you are going to want to hear this. But let's start off with the news, okay? Angelique Changelis, uh, been recover- writing for Michigan for the Detroit News for 30 years or so, uh, was, was down there. She tweeted this out. UMQB Kate McNamara asked if Dax Hill uh, traveled to the Orange Bowl. It's not our job to comment on other players, so we'll let Co- Car- Co- Coach Harbaugh answer that question. Other players, Andrew Vistardis, offensive lineman, etc. There's a bunch of Michigan offensive players that did a Zoom press conference this morning, and the ones that were at asked about Hill, basically said the same thing. So clearly some media training going on for Michigan, especially about the availability of one of their best players. But let's take a look at what we know here on this story. Daxon Hill, Michigan starting safety, starting nickel cornerback, starting, uh, you know, jack of all trades. He, uh, he intercepts passes, he sacks quarterbacks, and he didn't make the trip down to Florida with uh, Michigan on Christmas. Rumors have persisted for about uh, a little over 24 hours, about uh, 30 hours or so, that he either tested positive for coronavirus or he had a close contact. Now, uh, it's pretty interesting that his brother, who has been out all, uh, all pretty much all season with the Baltimore Ravens, was put on the COVID contact, uh, COVID uh, list on Christmas Day himself. So people are speculating, no inside info on this, that maybe the Hill family got together on the 23rd, 24th, in and around Ann Arbor. Um, and, you know, when his brother uh, tested positive, that they wanted to keep Dax as a, uh, you know, quarantine him just in case he would test positive, not to get other people on the uh, the team uh, unhealthy. But what we do know now here Wednesday afternoon is he is expected to fly either tonight, and I'm this is about three or four hours, you know, Kelly's conversations a few hours ago. So uh, we may have more information on this. I'll put it down in the comments or my Twitter account when we do. He's either going to fly privately tonight or on Thursday. They don't want to put him on a commercial flight by himself, of course, to not risk, of course, catching it after this five or six day isolation period. So Michigan with this is reportedly following the new CDC guidelines, which are only a day or so old, which says uh, in the NFL, and I believe the NFL has adopted them, I believe the NBA is going to adopt them if they haven't yet as well, is vaccinated or unvaccinated, really no difference at this point, uh, because both you know, vaccinated and unvaccinated are spreading and cont- uh, contracting the virus. So if you, uh, you isolate for five days and then you have back-to-back negative tests, if you have you know, coronavirus, and we're not sure even if Daxon Hill does, even if he does, five days, two back-to-back tests, he can then travel and, and resume activities. Michigan technically doesn't have to follow those guidelines, right? It's not law, but they're trying to do their best to, uh, to you know, pl- play, play, play by the rules that other teams reportedly are playing down. So five days. So if you think about it, if he you know, were to be in close contact to the 23rd, 24th, that lines up with him potentially taking a test yesterday. And then tonight, if he, uh, if he tests positive, he'll jump on a flight Wednesday evening or Thursday morning. And hey, with the CDC uh, making these changes, I, I guess we can only say one thing. Thanks, Biden, right? Thanks, thanks to Joe Biden and the wonderful folks at the CDC who have changed their guidelines. And boy, they haven't missed it all with this whole coronavirus pandemic. Uh, pretty much everything they say has been spot on, all right? Right. Um, Bruce or Marshall, what would you say if you had to say something to President Joe Biden right now? 
Take me out to dinner. Oh, you guys know the <laughs> meme. You guys know the uh, the viral TikTok trend. Sup, baby? Take me out to dinner. Uh, they call him Joe Byron, but nevertheless, uh, it is President Joe Biden. So if Michigan wins the national title, it's like, thanks, Obama. It was kind of the meme back, you know, six, eight years ago. Thanks, Biden. I'm giving him full credit for Michigan getting there. All right, if you guys want to make sure that Michigan beats Georgia, and by the way, we're going to talk more on this Daxon Hill situation, get a little more info for you, so stick with us. But... We've done this all season, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Penn State, Ohio State, maybe a game or two else in there. The big games, let's make sure we break the all-time like records. Let's get a 1,000 of you guys to like this video. Don't jinx it. It's worked in the past. You know, I'm wearing the same shirt and shoes every game day at this point to not jinx it, and you guys got to do the same as the viewing audience. Like this video because you don't want to be sitting there Friday night, clock hits midnight, Michigan loses potentially, and you're looking at yourself and you're saying, you know, I was sticking into that Yoder by not liking the video, and I didn't, and they lose, and it's all my fault because somebody did that for the Michigan State game, and I'm never going to forgive them. Again, so like this video, hit that like button, doesn't cost you anything, and it might uh, win Michigan a national championship, and at least a win over Georgia. What if Daxon Hill can't play, right? This is all still speculation. Michigan's being very tight-lipped. They don't want to give any advantage to Georgia uh, in their game planning uh, for this upcoming game, which is a little over 48 hours away. And so things could change, right? Daxon Hill might test positive again, or maybe for the first time. Uh, he could not make the flight. Whatever happens, uh, until he shows up in the field or we see a photo of him in uniform or you know down in Miami, uh, we're not certain that this happens, and he is going to be very vital in stopping this man, who some people think could be one of the best two or three players, uh, true freshman players in all the country. Tight end Brock Bowers, 800 yards receiving, 11 touchdowns, about 50 catches this year, leading Georgia's leading receiver as a true freshman tight end out of Napa, California. I mean, Georgia's done uh, in spots really good job at recruiting the West Coast, but look what they did just just their last game, right against Alabama. Uh, it was a blowout game for the most part. Alabama probably could have scored 50 on them. And maybe some of these were junk stats towards the end of the game. But nevertheless, Brock Bowers was pretty much the key offensive weapon for Georgia against Alabama. 10 catches, 139 yards, and one touchdown. Daxton Hill playing all kinds of roles for Michigan this season. He plays safety sometimes. He plays kind of that robber formation. You know, if he's a safety, a linebacker, he comes off the edge and gets a sack or disrupts a quarterback greatly. Or if the quarterback kind of breaks outside containment, which Stenson Bennett has been known to do. He's a small little fellow, like 5'10", 190 pounds. He, if he's getting rushed from the outside or he's getting rushed from one side, he's going to try and take off and make a play with his feet or potentially his arm. But Dax Neal is going to be vital in all those areas. But most importantly, when Bowers goes downfield, Michigan is going to most likely use Dax as the guy who lines up over top of him and prevents him from getting 15, 18 yards of chunk downfield. So Michigan will, without question, be majorly impact. Now, I think if it was a you know Daxton, if it was uh, Hassan Haskins or Aiden Hutchinson or um, you know obviously Cade McNamara, this would be much more impactful starting offensive lineman. But um, this is probably like the fourth or fifth most impactful person Michigan could lose if Dax didn't play because of the matchups with Georgia's offense and what they like to do with uh, kind of an under-talented walk-on quarterback, Stetson Bennett, getting the ball to their true, fr true freshman tight end, uh, Bauer. So we'll see what happens. We're going to talk about more about Dax Hill, what this, the lineup would look like without him. But I want to know from you guys, predict it. Let me know. Put uh, put your money where your mouth is. Put your cojones on the table. Will Dax play versus Georgia? Simple as is. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. I'll make this the pin comment in the video. So go down uh, right below the video. Type Y for yes. Type N for no. Let me know. I'm putting a yes myself. Let me know what you guys think. Y or N. All right. You haven't uh, – yeah, we, we – um, Offered up the tickets last week. Those sold. I said a family member had some tickets, but other people have reached out to me and said, hey, James, StubHub is ridiculous fees. The people got to pay 50 bucks. I got to pay 50 bucks. They're making 100 bucks a ticket. If any of your viewers want tickets for, you know, cheaper than you can get on StubHub or any of the other ticketing websites, uh, do you mind offering up on my show? So I've got two or three people have reached out to me. I think once the guy said he thinks he sold them. But uh, if you're looking for tickets, 30 40 $50 cheaper than uh, you can get at StubHub. If you're down in Florida or looking to make the trip or the drive, uh, I got a couple pair that you know. I'm just going to make the connection from the person who's got them to you. I'm not taking any part in the transaction, but email me, James at Chat Sports, if you're looking for tickets in the next couple days. I'll make the introduction, and if you can, the uh, ticket holder can work out uh, price. will be. They said, I said, as long as it's cheaper and stuff up significantly, and they said yes, it will be. So that is the word, James at ChatSports.com, and I'll try and make the connection, save you guys a little bit of cash. 
All right, so we talked about what if Daxton Hill cannot play, right? It's certainly going to hurt Michigan with uh, limiting uh, the tight end, the, tres- the freshman tight end uh, Phenom Bowers from Georgia. Um, but what will Michigan's defensive lineup look like? I'm going to talk about that here in one moment. But the spread of this game has been pretty consistent this week, although it has gone up on the over-under by a half point from 45 to uh, 45 and a half points. But Georgia is still favored by more than a touchdown, seven and a half point favorite. Folks, I think Michigan's going to win this game outright. Uh, I certainly think um, if they were to lose, they'll cover that seven and a half point spread out. I don't even know if Georgia's going to score seven and a half points versus Michigan, let alone beat them by that many. But if you agree with me, you're all on the train. If you want to have some fun watching college football bowl season, NFL playoffs, NFL regular season in week 17 and 18, get going with our sportsbook partner, Bet US. We've got the promo still going on until kickoff. Friday night. You got to go to chatsports.com slash go blue. Just screenshot it, write that link down, type it into your browser right now because if you don't use that link, we can't track you to this promotion right here. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, Michigan football jerseys. We still uh, have a couple dozen that we can give away before kickoff. So jersey at chatsports.com. Email us after you go with BetUS. You got to make at least a $100 deposit and make your first bet before Friday's kickoff. So you got over two days. You guys can do it. Jerseys are $125 value and we will send them to you. So it's really honestly one of the the great deals uh, that you can get out there for any product, let alone uh, have some fun with a sports book. So chatsports.com slash go blue. Email jersey at chatsports.com. We will fulfill the jersey to you. So I said, well, you know, what happens if Dak still can't play? What will Michigan's defense look like? And it's a lot of the names you guys know and, and trust, and people have been in and out of the lineup. But here's what I think Michigan's secondary most likely would look like uh, against Georgia coming up on Friday night. Brad Hawkins, freshman Rod Moore, who moved into the starting lineup over the last four or five games, took that job from R.J. Moten. Though I do think with Georgia being a more of a run-heavy team, or at least a more run-focused team, uh, R.J. Moten will get in there. He's more of the bigger-bodied safety run stopper. I could see Hawkins uh, you know, swapping, being in there with Moten, or potentially uh, both more Hawkins and Moten in their three-safety look. But Gmon Green is healthy, will kind of backfill the nickel role that uh, Daxon Hill has been filling for most of this season. And then your starting quarterbacks, Vincent Gray and DJ Turner, will be there for Michigan uh, in the secondary. So that's what I'm expecting to look like if Dax doesn't play, although we do expect him to be on a flight within the next 24 hours heading down to Miami. He is the key to pressuring Georgia's quarterback because Georgia has athletes. They've got big-time players on the offensive line, and they know that Michigan is going to try and disrupt their passing game with Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo. In a lot of ways, Ohio State, looking back, played into Michigan's strength on defense, right? When you're trying to get two and three, four wide receivers downfield, give your quarterback an extra half second to throw, and you've got the best pass rushing tandem in the country coming off the edge, and a quarterback like C.J. Stroud, who isn't known or has refused to take off and run, that played right into Michigan's hand. They could pressure Stroud. He had a lot of yards passing, but they were kind of junk yards. A lot of them didn't even matter, and it was all giving up stuff between the 20s. George is not like that, right? They are not going to put their quarterback in a position where he's back there for three and a half, three seconds, and letting Aiden Hutchinson you know, tee off on him, David Ojabo. So Daxon Hill bringing the pressure on uh, Stetson Bennett that they're not expecting off the edge when he's lined up on the slot or on the tight end, or when he eludes David Ojabo coming off the edge, and he's trying to make some plays with his feet, which he has been known to do, Daxon Hill is going to be the guy who surprisingly chases him down. So really hoping that the things we're hearing today on Wednesday come true Friday night, maybe the biggest game in Michigan football history, folks. Go down and predict the score. Michigan, Georgia, college football playoff. As Jim Harbaugh say, our job on uh, New Year's Eve is to entertain America. And uh, on uh, on December 31st, leading right into the ball drop and predict the score. I'm on record. Uh, I've been pretty damn good about it all year, predicting the record of a lot of Michigan's biggest games. I've got Michigan winning this one 30-17. to Comment down below what you guys think as well. We'll let you guys know how our programming calendar is going to look over the next few Few days so you don't miss any videos. I'll turn on those notifications so you get the pushes to your phone. But uh, but if not, here's what we got going on. Uh, Thursday afternoon, we will put out a Michigan football mailbag. We took some questions on Monday show and some rumors about Michigan's offensive strategy and a little bit of defensive strategy going into this game that we've ascertained from practice this week. Friday AM, we've got our Michigan Georgia burning questions game day preview that'll go out around noon or so. I'm guessing Friday night post game show. Look, might do it live. 
If I'm in a bad mood for some reason, right, might just do a, a video where I, uh, I sulk in sorrow. And then Saturday, baby, national championship game preview, right? Michigan national championship game preview against either Cincinnati or Alabama. We're willing it into existence, and you can do it right with us. So make sure to subscribe, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. We will see you guys tomorrow. Go Blue.